let us try to understand how to draw Moore's circle. So, at a point in a stain material, there are two naturally perpendicular stresses of 30 newton per mm square and 70 newton per mm square, both tensile, and they are accompanied by a shear stress of 20 newton per mm square. So, for this, we have to find out the principal stresses. That is, we have to find out what is the major principal stress and what is the minor principal stress. Then, position of the principal planes. So, there are two principal planes which carry only the normal stresses and no shear stress, and they are mutually perpendicular to each other. And we have to find out the position of such two principal planes and the maximum shear stress. And we have to use the most circle method for this. As shown over here, we are having the sigma x, that is the stress in x direction, 30 MPa or 30 Newton per mm square tensile. Similarly, stress in y direction, that is sigma y, that is also tensile, that is 70 Newton per mm square, and it is accompanied by the shear stress as shown over here. Now we know that if we consider the plane BC. We have to always start from this plane BC. On this particular plane, we are having the sigma x which is acting and it is tensile. So, this 30 Newton per mm square is positive because we are considering tensile stress as positive. But the shear stress, now we have to consider this BC plane and this AD plane. And you can see that these are the pair of complementary shear stresses. So, this is Q and this is Q. They are parallel to each other or rather they are tangential to surface BC and AD and they will produce. Now, see the arrow of this particular Q. It is going in which direction? It is going in the clockwise direction from this Q to this particular Q. So, we can say that there is a clockwise shear stress which is acting on this plane BC. You can identify it by this particular shear stress Q also. From this arrow, to this particular Q is again going in the clockwise direction. So, we can say that on this plane BC, there is a tensile stress which is also positive and there is a shear stress as it is a clockwise, we have considered the clockwise shear stresses as positive. So, both that is normal stress as well as shear stress both are positive on this plane BC and therefore, we will have the point 30, comma, 20 on this particular plane that is BC. So, 30 is the normal stress that is the X component and 20 is the shear stress that is the Y component. Now, we will see the plane AB. So, you can see on this particular plane AB there is a normal stress that is perpendicular stress. You can see this is the normal stress sigma Y. It is tensile so that is positive. So, this is 17 Newton per mm square that is positive. But this particular Q, you can see the pair of this complementary shear stresses. This arrow will go in the anti clockwise direction towards this particular Q. Or rather, this particular arrow it is also going in the anti clockwise direction towards this another complementary shear stress that is Q. So, we can say that this particular plane that is AP is having the tensile normal stress which is of tensile nature so it is positive so 70 will be positive but the shear stress is in the anti clockwise direction so therefore that will be negative so this is the pair that we have obtained and using this we have to draw the Mohr's circle and then we will find out the various values now as we have seen earlier also on x axis there is a normal stress that we are going to plot. On the y-axis, there is a tangential or shear stress that we are going to plot. From O, we will measure the distances over here. Now, our first point is 30, 20. That is on plane BC. Both are positive. So, from O, we will take some suitable scale. So, you can see here we have chosen the scale of 1 centimeter is equal to 10 Newton per mm square. 
so 30 divided by 10 that is 3 cm so x length will be 3 cm then 20 divided by 10 that is 2 cm so this y coordinate will be 2 so according to the scale this will be 3 comma 2 so that point we have plotted over here on plane ab there is a tensile stress normal tensile stress of 70 so 70 divided by 10 that is 7 cm so from o measure the distance 7 cm and shear stress is negative so it is minus 20 so in y coordinate is negative so in the negative direction it is minus 2 so it will have a coordinate of 7 comma minus 2 according to the scale so in this way we have obtained these two points so first point is 3 comma 2 another will be 7 comma minus 2 and always measure it from o so o is our measuring point now drop a perpendicular from a and from b on this x axis join this a b now this a b will intersect at point c on the normal stress as shown over here then with this c as a center and c a or c b as the radius draw the circle so with c as a center and c a or c b as a radius draw the circle so this is our Bohr's circle suppose these points are d and e draw the vertical line also as shown over here so as you can see over here this is o f this more circle wherever it touches the normal stress axis at point f this distance o f is the minor principal stress because this is the minimum value of the stress then from o to g this is the sigma n1 that is the major principal stress because this is the largest value that is there so it is a maximum or major principal stress from this to this that is sigma n1 then sigma x is of 30 Newton per mm square by scale it is 3 cm sigma y that is of 70 Newton per mm square by scale it is 7 cm that we have already seen then this particular radius is always the maximum radius and therefore we know that on y axis we are calculating or we are measuring the shear stress and therefore this ch or ci will give you the value of maximum shear stress similarly this b c and g this is nothing but the position of the principal plane so here we have shown this angle 2 theta with the positive x axis so this angle 2 theta will give the first plane of this will give the first principal plane so this is b c and g we have to measure this particular angle divided by 2 so that you will get theta 1 and then we know that two principal planes they are at 90 degree to each other so add a 90 to that we will get the value of theta 2 so in this way you can see that we can easily find out what is the minor principal stress major principal stress then ch is the maximum shear stress and you can measure the angle 2 theta so that you will get the position of the principal planes over here so using this we can easily find out the various values just we have to measure these distances for example suppose we want to find out this sigma n2 that is the minor principal stress then you have to measure the distance o f and multiply it by the scale that is 10 suppose we want to find out sigma n1 then you have to measure the distance from o to g and then multiply it by the scale that is 10 suppose we want to find out the maximum shear stress then measure the distance ch or ci and then multiply it by the scale that is 10. So in this way we find out the various values of stresses. So sigma n1 is nothing but length OG in centimeter multiplied by scale. That value is 78 Newton per mm square. Length OG is 7.8 and multiply by the scale that is 10. Similarly we can find out the values of minor principal stress, maximum shear stress, position of the principal plane that is angle 2 theta 2 theta that we have measured is suppose say 45 degree then 2 theta 1 is equal to 45 degree theta 1 will be 22.5 that is known as the position of the first principal plane add 90 to that so you get the position of the second principal plane 
So in this way, we can solve some typical examples on the principal planes by using the graphical method that is nothing but the Morse circle. Thank you very much for watching. Do subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.